Good evening and welcome to the evening Bible class here at Hope Missionary Baptist Church. On tonight, we will continue the class Formation for Christian Ministry. And the subject matter that we will deal with on tonight is the depth of prayer. And as believers and new believers in Christ, we must understand the importance of having a living prayer life. So we have to understand that it is difficult to write about prayer. It is difficult to teach on prayer because of the sacredness of prayer. We must understand on tonight that prayer is sacred. And because prayer is sacred, we need to take prayer much more seriously as brothers and sisters in Christ. When something is considered sacred, it means that it is connected to God in some way, shape, or form. And we must begin to take prayer in church and out of church more seriously due to the fact that it is directly connected to our Lord and our Savior. It is tough, like I stated, to write on prayer and to teach on prayer because it's sacred, but it's also tough to teach and to write about prayer if you don't spend time in prayer. Understand on tonight that our progress in prayer is an answer to prayer and true prayer promotes its own progress and increases our power to pray. I'm going to say that again. We have to understand that our progress in prayer is an answer to prayer and true prayer promotes its own progress and increases our power to pray. We must understand that one of the worst sins that we can commit is the sin of prayerlessness. That means God has granted us access to him through prayer but we denied that access because of some selfish motive or reason. Many times in our walk as believers, we feel abandoned by God. And we feel like we are walking in darkness. And many times we feel abandoned by God and we feel that we are walking in darkness due to our lack of seeking God in prayer. Many times we may even feel inadequate and we feel that way because either we have become lazy in our prayer lives or we have neglected prayer altogether. Understand on tonight, the new believer and the seasoned believer should not be lazy in praying, nor should we be absent from praying. We must strive daily to commune with God with what I call living prayers to God. We should seek to have living prayers and a growing prayer life each and every day. We should become more, we should become more consistent with our prayers each and every day. We must trust God and commune with God. And when we do this, we entune ourselves, not only to God better, but we entune ourselves to one another because we must understand that prayer strengthens the church. I'm going to say this and say that again. Prayer strengthens the church. If we are in tune with God and we are in fellowship with one another, it strengthens the body of Christ. Understand, as we move forward, that not having a desire to pray is a sin because we have been commanded to pray. And the result of this sin is an inability to pray. Mm. When we pray, it causes 
a new sense of power and spiritual health within us. When we partake of prayer, we are refreshed and we are strengthened so we can deal with the issues of life that come along each and every day. We are all going to have some type of struggle in the midst of our process that leads us to our ultimate purpose. However, we must understand that the purpose of having a growing prayer life is to strengthen our relationship with the Lord. Psalms 84, 2 reads, My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. We must work diligently for a growing prayer life. To feed and satisfy our souls, we must seek God in prayer. Therefore, we must have a consistent prayer life. What I mean by that is that we, on, we don't only pray when we are about to eat. Every move we make, every step we take should be saturated in prayer. Prayer aids us in being more conscious of the gift of God and the grace of God. When we pray, we are to invoke the name of the Lord. When we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus and through Jesus. When we pray, we know that Jesus is in the midst. We have to acknowledge when we pray that our God is a holy God. We make decisions in our heart that he is our God and he is our Lord and he is our Savior. We can't just get in the habit of saying these things. We have to get these things in our hearts. We petition God when we pray that our efforts, our thoughts, and our actions be inspired by the Holy Spirit. When our actions are inspired by the Holy Spirit, there is fruit. Last week, we discussed the invocation and its importance. The definition of invocation, of an invocational prayer, is a request for the spiritual presence and blessing of God in any situation. To invoke the Lord is to call upon him earnestly. However, on tonight, to say a little bit more about the invocation, we understand that Jesus taught his disciples to invoke God as father. And he also taught them to pray in his name. Prayer is to be addressed to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus has promised that where two or three have been gathered together in his name, he is in the midst. See here, Jesus lets his disciples know and he lets us know as disciples that he will be in the midst of us when we seek him in unity. That's a blessing right there. That he will be in the midst of what we say and what we do. If we as a body, the body of Christ, seek him in unity. Just think of how, how powerful the church would be if we sought him in unity. See, when, we, when Jesus commands this, this is an affirmation of his omnipresence and his deity. And that means that his deity means it's an it's, it's, it's affirmation of Jesus' divine nature, his divine status. Because when we gather, when two or three are in the midst, are there, uh, when two or three pray, he is in the midst. When disciples pray, we know that we are to address 
God as Father. And our desire should be to declare the promises of the presence of Jesus as we begin our acts of worship. So no matter what we do, we should declare the promises and the presence of Jesus wherever we are. Not only must we declare it, but we have to get it in our spirit. We have to know it in our heart. That when we gather together, we as a church, we as a believing body, need to seek to declare individually and collectively that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we need to stand on his promises. We, and we stand on his promises because we know no matter what comes our way, he will be with us. If we're sick, he is with us. If we're down and out or up and out, he is with us. We can rejoice on today because we have confidence in knowing that God is with us no matter what. But not only is it important that we declare the promises of Christ, but we must also proclaim the holiness of God's name. It says, hallowed be thy name. We, we call upon God as Father, but we must acknowledge him as holy. It's not enough that we just say that he's holy. We have to know that we know that we know that we know that God is a holy God. We have to know this in our hearts. See, the invocation should call on the name of the Lord and declare his holiness. And we have example, an example of this in scripture. Psalm 105. It begins, O oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Speak of all his wonders. Glory in his holy name. Let the heart of those who seek the Lord be glad. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. And we see there in the passage, it says glory in his holy name. It's acknowledging God as Lord and acknowledging God as holy. When we acknowledge God, as holy. This includes a proclamation of the divine attributes of God. We see an example of this in Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7. It says, Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. See, this truly shows us how sacred the moment of prayer is when we truly realize that we serve a holy and compassionate God that is gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love and truth. The Most High God has allowed us an opportunity to dialogue with him as a loving father. Not only must we acknowledge God as holy, but we must claim that God is our God. When we look at the disciples' prayer, we claim that God is our father. That means we are acknowledging that God is our God. Look at Psalms 46, verse 1. 
It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I want us to notice this. God is claimed as our God. What does it really mean? It means that in our prayers, we have to acknowledge God for who he truly is in our lives. He is our Lord and he is our savior. And we must profess this because we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. What we are basically stating in our prayers is that we have allegiance to God, not only as savior, but we have allegiance to God as Lord over our lives. We look at Exodus chapter 15, verses one through three. It states, then Moses and the sons of Israel sang this song to the Lord and said, I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. The horse and his rider, he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will extol him. Listen to that again. This is my God, and I will praise him. That must be our declaration every day. This is my God. And I will praise him in the difficult times. This is my God. And I will praise him in the good times. This is my God. And I will praise him in the midst of COVID-19. This is my God. And I will praise him. Because he's holy. And he is worthy to be praised. The lastly, our prayers are inspired by the work of the Holy Spirit. And they are received through the intercession of Jesus Christ. True worship, according to the teaching of Jesus, is worship that is in spirit and in truth. See, our worship is inspired by the Spirit. Our worship is led by the Spirit. Our worship is warmed by the Spirit. Our worship is purified by the Spirit. So Christian worship is worship that is in Christ. Our worship is in Christ in the sense that it is because of the sacrifice of Christ, we are able to pass through the veil into the holy of holies. Worship is an act of those who make up the body of Christ. It is for the sake of Christ that the, that the Father receives our prayers. It is appropriate, therefore, that our prayers be an emotional appeal for both the intercession of Christ and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. All this is implied when we pray through Jesus and in his name. So on tonight, prayer aids in being more conscious of the gift of God. And the grace of God. When we pray. We invoke. The name of the Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus. And through Jesus Christ. We know. That when we pray. That Jesus. Is in the midst. We have. To acknowledge the fact. That God. Is holy. We make a declaration in our hearts and in our minds 
that he is our God. He is our Lord and he is our savior. And we are willing to serve him as master. And lastly, we petition God that our efforts, our thoughts, and our actions be inspired by the Holy Spirit. So I hope you understand on tonight that prayer is serious business. It's not something that we just get up and do on Sunday morning, but prayer should be our lifestyle. But if you have any questions, any concerns or anxieties, feel free to reach out to me and we can discuss more about prayer. But know that we need to be focused on having a living prayer life and a growing prayer life. All for the glory of God. So you be blessed on tonight. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Continue to be safe. Continue to make smart decisions. Practice social distancing. Wear your mask. And we'll see you again soon. You have a blessed night. Pastor Mosley out.